This is very easily the longest Sandman book I've read and it took me absolutely ages just because this is a real anthology kind of a thing. There's fables and reflections so Sandman number six there's just a bunch of self-contained stories and I found some of them awesome, some of them not that great. Now there's not much to say about the prologue. Uh, it wasn't that great. It was forgettable and I didn't find it that interesting. Maybe it, it was very obvious thematically what it meant, but it wasn't done in an impactful way. It's just not Sandman at its best. It was fine though, it was a decent read. Three Septembers and a January is about the Emperor of America. And I already knew this story, of course. A lot of people do by this one, it's very, very famous. But if you don't, what a treat you're in for. The fact that I knew this story was just like cherry on the top. It was just fascinating to see what I already knew had been real. And you know, I, I wasn't an expert on this guy or anything, but I knew generally his story. And I knew a lot of details that were again referenced in this book. And so when I saw the story come out and we kind of see this metaphysical narrative going on below it that's just deeply entwined with what I already know as well as what could be and, it's, and just the mythology that he's built it's easily this is my favorite story within the entire Sandman universe what a amazing fascinating deeply moving story just fascinating just because of the way it blends every bit of history Sandman mythos writing thematics all that kind of stuff, it just comes together in a perfect blend. Second story is Thermidor. It's about the French Revolution and it was not that good. Maybe it was good, I'm not exactly sure. I couldn't read the handwriting in this. The lettering, I'm sure it was good to like some people. I, I was just unable to read the handwriting just because I guess I'm uh, I guess I'm uneducated, but it was just difficult for me to understand what was going on as well as why it was exactly significant. Things were going on right at the beginning and I just found it hard to attach myself to anything that was going on. And then immediately it moved forward, like really forward in time. And I began to be confused about whether or not these were the same characters and and why they were doing all this, what, what exactly was going on. Certain characters strung, rung out to me as like very interesting and very deep, except these characters were not played out to the extreme. And these weren't even the main characters. The main characters I found completely forgettable, completely bland. Maybe I'll reread it and figure it out later. But just, it, it was not that good. I felt like it was just a blend of too many things without really having a core message or a core idea that made everything worth it and bring everything together. It just didn't have a strong enough anything. This is a complete opposite from the first story. The Hunt was in between. The Hunt was the third story. It is a short story and I did find that it's fable like atmosphere was very enthralling. I found that very, very interesting. I found the message uh, deeply moving, great, great stuff, really, really smart and awesome. My difficulty was with the numerous amounts of subplots and very often I, I just couldn't figure out how the subplot fit into the rest of it. It made me kind of confused as to what the core message was, right? At the end, one of the characters within the own story complained that this doesn't even really have a core message. And I do agree with that. The core message seems to be one thing or another thing, depending on how you look at it. But I, I just can't seem to locate what they were trying to say with this story. And for me, that's a problem. If you don't have a central vision for a story, I'm not gonna really enjoy it. That's not to say that the storytelling itself was not fantastic. It's just the specifics that I had a problem with, specific plot lines connecting with other plot lines. August was a difficult one for me because I really expected to love it. It was a very, really cool Roman history type and I thought that, that would be awesome. I thought it would be a lot of uh, history stuff coming together. And while it was that, I feel like it just didn't com have a compelling enough story. Soft Places was really, really interesting in one way. It's a really long story completely not confusing at all. It's very, very clear in what it's trying to do. And because of that, it did have one clear thematic message. My difficulty with that message was that the message did not really have any manifestation until part of the story had concluded. And so we do have this one plot line that has the story and the thematic message in it, but I can't figure out what the rest of it has to do with anything. The story itself was not confusing. The ideas behind them were kind of confusing. That's the best way I can put it, but just from a thematic perspective and from a storytelling perspective, it did feel like certain portions of the story had no value other than to just kind of be there and connect up the other bits of the story. So that's not a very good use of your time, obviously. The Parliament of Rooks is the last story in this, and I did find this one to be kind of weird. It is self-contained like a lot of other stories. The majority of the story is just a, a bunch of dialogue with flashbacks and just allusions to things that happen that aren't happening right now. And I found that storytelling wise, it's fascinating. It's very, very cool. But the story is not good. I feel like the story is probably really, really weak. I, I didn't find it at all enthralling. I found uh, the storytelling in many bits suffered because of this. You could tell while it was fantastic in some places, maybe half of it was average and just a, maybe a quarter of it was below average because it's such an interesting concept in theory, but the way it was executed just made it so that there was so little that I, I was able to understand and find as a useful and important piece of the story that I just didn't enjoy that much. And then finally, the last story, Ramadan. This one stuck in my head a lot. I thought it was fascinating, uh, difficult to read just because of the text, but just fascinating, colorful, great. The first half of it, I found just a lot of boring stuff. Just, you know, the guy was just chilling and he was just doing stuff. But then it got to a point where something happened. And when that something happens, you're just in for the ride and you realize something important is happening here. 
And as you go through, you realize, okay, well, what, what exactly is interesting about this and important about this? And then the story concludes. And the effect of that story is just awesome. It's just brilliant. It's just so moving. It, it, it's such an interesting and deeply rooted story in the actual core foundation of this entire series. And that's what makes it so interesting to me. Like I've just explained, there's some, been some highs, there've been some lows. Uh, overall, I think that this averages out at three stars. I had a lot of fun with the good ones and the bad ones were just, you know, it doesn't matter because it's kind of an anthology. Overall, I had a great time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to tell me any of your thoughts on any of the stories, I would love to, love to, love to hear them in the comments down below. Also, if you have any problems with what I reviewed specifically, what I thought about them, I would love to argue with you in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button uh, and consider looking at my channel to see what other stuff I've got. And if you want, you, if you're convinced, you can subscribe to me after that. Uh, I have my Goodreads linked in the description down below, so you can go ahead and follow me there if you'd like. And uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.